Greetings to all enthusiasts of physics and physical experiments. I am Andrei Shetnikov, and today we will be exploring the remarkable effect that cosmonaut Vladimir Jenbekov observed in 1985 during his flight on the Salute 7 space station. Join me as we delve into this fascinating phenomenon. He observed the nut sheep, which had fallen off the spike, flipping in flight in an unexpected manner, and then flipping repeatedly while still maintaining the same rotational direction. This experience was subsequently replicated by other astronauts using various objects. And when we observe this phenomenon, two questions emerge. What is the reason for a rotating object to flip over and why does it happen in such a sudden manner? And the answer to the first question was given back in 1834 by the French mathematician and mechanic Louis Poinceau in the treatise New Theory of the Rotation of Bodies. And this answer is referred to as the theorem of instability of rotation around the middle axis. It will be convenient for me to explain this theorem to you by using the example of this rectangular box. While rotating around the red axis, the moment of inertia is at its maximum because the various parts of the body are positioned at their farthest distance from the axis, leading to an increased rotational inertia. When the box rotates around the blue axis, the moment of inertia is at its minimum value. And when rotating around the green axis, the moment of inertia turns out to be intermediate between the maximum and minimum. And it is exactly at the moment of rotating around this axis that the movement of the body becomes unstable. And here I perform a rotation around the axis with the maximum moment of inertia. The rotation is stable. Rotation around an axis with minimum moment of inertia is also stable. And now here is an axis with the average moment of inertia, and the box does not rotate steadily, but instead flips abruptly in midair during its flight. Poincaré proved his theorem using mathematical methods developed by the greatest mathematician of the 18th century, Leonard Euler, who lived in the 18th century. And here is an explanation in simple terms why rotation around the middle axis is unstable. It was invented relatively recently, and Terry Tao did it. An exceptional mathematician of our era, a professor at the University of California, Los Angeles. And now I will attempt to clarify this to you. Let's envision a model body in a state of weightlessness. A crossbar with heavy loads attached at the two ends and light ones at the other two of much smaller mass. The moment of inertia of such a body about the red axis will be the largest, about the blue axis it will be the smallest, and about the green axis it will be the average. And allow this body to rotate around the green axis so that substantial loads can move in a circular motion and maintain equilibrium. The angular momentum vector is directed along this axis, and it can't change due to conservation of angular momentum. The angular momentum is mainly created by heavy loads, and from the law of conservation it follows that heavy loads will always continue to rotate near the same circle, no matter what happens to this body. And at this point, it will be convenient for us to switch to a non-inertial reference system that is rotating around the green axis together with heavy loads. Suppose that the beam with light loads has slightly deviated from the axis of rotation. Within the rotating reference system, these loads will undergo centrifugal force, leading to the deviation of the beam from the axis and a progressive increase in angle of rotation until the beam reaches a 90 degree position. However, the crossbar will not stay in this position, but will move past it due to inertia. Now the centrifugal force will slow down the loads until they come to a stop, turning almost 180 degrees. And then the crossbar, which is carrying the loads, will swing back and forth in a manner that resembles the motion of a pendulum. And now we must observe how this motion happens in a reference frame that is inertial. And for this, I prepared cruciforms similar to the model that was discussed in theory. However, the reality is that we do not experience weightlessness in our room. Nonetheless, we can simulate weightlessness temporarily by picking up and throwing a model object and then recording its motion using a high-speed camera. And here we observe the manner in which the light crossbar flips, flips once more, and makes an attempt to flip for the third time. 
The substantial green crossbar rotates predominantly in one plane in strict accordance with the law of conservation of angular momentum, as dictated by the principles of physics. And here is an additional option of this model that we are currently shooting, pointing the camera at the ceiling. Here's the first coup. Then she executes a series of multiple turns while maintaining her position in this particular stance. Here is the second coup. And we capture the model by hand because it was falling directly onto the lens. And now I comprehend the reason for a phenomenon that I encountered in the second grade when I joined the AV model circle. And we built a flying helicopter there which had a propeller attached to a stick. And if the stick is not long enough, it turns out that during the launch, the helicopter behaves extremely unstable and it is impossible to start it. But if you slightly extend it, or something similar, make it heavier at the bottom, I placed an aluminum ring here that weighs less than one gram, then the flight becomes stable. This kind of helicopter can be launched to a height of several meters in the air. And yet we still have a question, why? With good launches in zero gravity, a rotating object hangs for several revolutions as if its rotation is stable and then suddenly, in one revolution, loses stability and flips over? In order to provide an answer to this question, we have developed a setup that partially simulates the effect of Jenny Beck. To begin with, there is a frame present in this location that consists of two massive loads. These loads have the capability to rotate around a horizontal axis. Secondly, and at this moment, I will release the thread. Here is a crossbar that possesses the capability to rotate around its axis in a circular motion. And at this very moment, I desire to inquire of both you and myself the following question. What will occur if I were to position the bar along the axis and then suddenly rotate the frame in an instant? But before conducting such an experiment, I want to write a little bit of theory. And we will assume that the loads attached to the frame are sufficiently massive for it to rotate at a practically constant angular velocity omega. And as Terry Tao argues, we will transition to a rotating nervous system of reports in which the frame is completely at rest. And as a result, the centrifugal force will exert its influence on the loads in this particular reference frame. Here I illustrate, and this force exerted on each load is equal to mo squared. And here is the value of R multiplied by sin alpha, which represents the distance from the axis of rotation to the load. But now let's see what happens when the deflection angles are small. The force is proportional to the sine of alpha, so if the angle alpha is small, its sine is small, and the force is accordingly small. In general, they could have placed the cargo along the frame axis with him. Then our strength would be zero, and they would remain here in this position. But this is only in theory. In practice, there will always be a corner, the lever will start to turn, the force will also start to increase, and accordingly, the loads will deviate faster and faster. Then, as already mentioned, the centrifugal force will be maximum when turning at an angle of 90 degrees. But truly, the shoulder of this force will decrease to zero. If you write a rotating moment, then we'll have R sin alpha cos alpha in it. Gathering of all in sine 2 alpha, also wrote it down here, this position will be overlooked due to inertia. Karamisla will swing in the other direction, and in theory, it will swing back and forth there in the absence of losses. And now let's see what happens in a real experiment. I position the bark of my thoughts on the axis of the frame as neatly as possible. And now, without delay, let's swiftly move the frame. Well, everything happened too quickly. Maybe we should take a look at what happened here in slow motion. And the frame started spinning, and the lever almost immediately began to deviate from its axis. It swung in the opposite direction, then swung back, but the angle at which the lever approached the axis became progressively larger with each swing. Why didn't I succeed in making the lever hang along the axis of the frame? For several turns of the frame. Is it friction in the bearings? Perhaps too large. 
However, no, I am currently spinning the liver and it seems fine. Spins for a prolonged duration. Another assumption needs to be taken into account. Maybe it's because I, I initiated rotating the frame and the lever commenced to shift. At the same time as this promotion, not after the frame has already been unwound. According to the theoretical model, but what I'm doing now is, I'll wrap it up. Wrap the thread around the frame and the lever, and then I will ignite this thread already during the rotation of the frame using a burner device for assistance. The thread unexpectedly broke, causing the lever to swing. It hung momentarily before swinging again, repeating the motion once more. There is some improvement, of course, but it is not very significant. And yet, I must say, that while we were inventing, debugging, and experimenting with this installation, our understanding of how and why the Jenebekov effect occurs has noticeably improved. However, now it is time to proceed to our ultimate question, and it will undoubtedly be this one. What is the reason that we are unable to achieve the same axis freezing on this installation as astronauts experience in zero gravity conditions, despite their ability to do so? Share your thoughts regarding this matter in the comments section below the video on YouTube.